Hello, Tarot Guy friends. Hey, everybody. It's Jason Blaha here, and it's time for another Orc Mode workout. And today, I went ahead and did max effort squat, and I decided to go ahead and do sumo deadlift. I don't ever pull sumo for anything heavy. I've just been doing it for speed work, so I thought I would work it into the rotation for max effort today, and it went pretty good. Um, back squats. You know, I had said I wanted to get at least 455 today, and I felt based on my calculations, I was good for at least 465. And everything felt good until I got to the 455, and it actually went up pretty good. This is still 365 ramping up. Um, it actually, in terms of bar speed and weight, was good. The problem is that that thoracic lean is coming back, that thoracic rounding, and people need to look closer. There's a lot of misconceptions, and, and this is stuff that if you can't look at my squat and assess this, you're not going to be able to look at your own squat and assess this. Um, people will say things like, well, that's good morning, and no, that's not good morning. Good morning has to do with a hip hinge, right? A forward lean rounding of the lower back. I have some thoracic rounding that happens purely in the upper third of my back, and it's about the midway mark and up. Um, and generally, that's for now, that's indicative of just needing a slightly stronger T-spine, maybe working a little more on my T-spine mobility. Um, it's not really a strength issue per se because I'm able to power right through it, and if you guys notice, the bar stays midfoot. That's one of the, the indicative things that it's not necessarily a desegmentation, which a few people tried to come and talk about with me um, who really don't know what they're talking about. They're getting points from other people's videos and they don't really understand exactly what's going on there. With the amount of weight that I have on the bar, if you were to see an actual true good morning, I would fall forward and fall completely onto the pins. It would be a missed lift. You can't, you can't do a good morning with double your body weight. You can't do it. It's the laws of biomechanics prevent it. It's, it's not physically possible. So the 435 looked clean, right? I didn't have any of that issue at all. That looked beautiful. So I went ahead and jumped up another 20 pounds, went up to my 455, and the bar speed was good. The power was good. I just didn't like the form on it when I looked at it on camera. So I didn't go up. And I decided instead to work on my weak points. Now, considering this is the heaviest I've gone since coming back after cutting down 40 pounds, and uh, the heaviest I've gone since I've rehabbed my lower back, and I have no pain, no fatigue from it, I'm happy with it because it's a 15 pound PR over last time we tested it, right? We got 440 last time. See what I mean? It's just that little bit of thoracic lean. And it's actually not bad. It's well within acceptable levels. And I probably could have gone up to 465. Like the strength was there. That was fast. Like there, there was no bar speed issue, no strength issues. Um, I just feel like that's good. I'm not going to get greedy if I'm seeing minor form degradation, which it's very minor. But it's there and I want to work on it. I want to work on that weakness before I continue to push the limit. I decided not to uh, overextend myself. Let's not risk it. It's a 15 pound increase over last time. And, you know, as long as we keep going up, I have a while. The goal is to get back to 500 before I do any further cutting. And we'll get there. I mean, 455 and I had a lot of power still in the tank. So what I need to do is continue to work on, on the weak points, which means T-spine. And we'll get to that with the accessory work. Um, I went ahead and went sumo today, and I wanted to get my hook grip, and here's the beauty of it. This is the heaviest pull I've done with a hook grip so far, ever. Because I've been working my hook grip, building my hook grip back up, and that's kind of my limiting factor right now, because I, I don't want to do heavy pulls with mixed grip. Some of my volume when the hook grip's given out, I'm switching back and forth between mix, uh, which you guys saw last week. And, uh, you know, again, we're getting better at it. My hook grip is coming up. And I did a little extra grip work this last week. Um, did my pinch block. So I'm going to keep doing grip work. We're going to keep working the hook grip. And I think we're going to be good. Because as, as we saw these, these all went up pretty easy. None of this was that heavy. Like again, I left pounds in the tank. I left pounds in the tank. But that's okay because this was the heaviest I've pulled sumo in over four years. Probably over five years. Uh, I pulled 600 sumo, what, about five, six years ago, right? We did, I think that's when we did it. I'd have to go back and check dates. Uh, but yeah, I pulled 600 sumo a long time ago, but I wasn't doing sumo that much. I had built my conventional up to like 585 at that point. So this all went pretty good. So here was 505, and I pulled the 505, and I'm like, you know, that actually felt pretty good on my thumbs. Um, you know, that felt pretty good, and we'd only got up to before, before I pulled my erector in my back with that foot injury that caused it, that foot infection, caused me to sideload everything. Um, I got to 515 with a hook grip. 
All right, so I'm like, well, let me go 525 and see how this feels in the hook. And I held it just fine. Like, again, part of me wanted to jump another 10 pounds. Like, I wanted to, to go ahead and go up to 535. But again, decided to play it cautious here. Let's play it cautious. We have time. A PR is a PR. Look, we just PR'd again the squat coming back. Uh, this is sumo deadlift PR, and this is a lifetime hook grip PR. Most I've tried to pull with a hook grip, and it held just fine. Look at that. Just held it for a couple seconds at the top. And I was happy with that. So I decided, what do I need to do? Well, I need to strengthen my T-spine, and we know safety bar squats are one of the best exercises for that. Like good mornings and then safety bar squats. Um, I need to strengthen that region. And I had said the other day that it felt like having tested these on a max. I got up to 370 with a, a box squat on a safety bar squat that these would be a fantastic accessory for the sumo deadlift. So I realized because these forced me to go slightly lighter and they still just hammer the T-spine, this is probably going to give me a fantastic accessory for both things we just did with the least amount of taxation on my body. In other words, training, stress versus fatigue created. Um, now, and I'm saying the least amount of fatigue, but these were hard, like straight up. When I went up another 50 pounds over this, this ramp up set, um, I was only able to get three sets and they just floored me like three by five. I was thinking, okay, I'm gonna do five by five. Well, I got five with this. And for those curious, the bar is 65 pounds, not 45. So this is only, only 245. And then I went up to 295. And again, that doesn't sound like a heavy weight for a squat till you start going below parallel on a box with a safety bar. Because keep in mind, my safety bar max on a box was 370 the other day. I just hit a 455 back squat. So what, 85 pounds difference? So realistically, this is closer to doing 400 pounds on a squat for work sets, for fives, right? And that's about right because I did 405 for five the other day on a back squat. Well, this felt just as fatiguing. Like these sets of five with only 295 on this, this box squat on a safety bar felt in terms of, of rate of perceived exertion, it felt like 405. And I felt my whole neck and my upper back and everything just fatigued. So this really, really hit the spot there. It really did what I wanted it to do. And I feel like, again, this will help strengthen my T-spine and it'll carry over to my sumo deadlift. And the reason I care about the sumo deadlift is because I'm using the speed sumo volume to build my conventional. And I'm mostly pulling uh, deficit work on these max effort days until today. And I'm gonna rotate through all my max effort stuff. I want about four different exercises, all right? So that I don't ever have to, not counting deloads, have to replicate the same max effort lift more than once every four weeks. So that's the general idea. And again, we get out enough space that we can use them as strength testers. We can practice pushing maximum effort and sometimes through some awkward bar paths, which again is a valuable skill to have, and use all this other various volume work to do most of the strength building. Those are more of strength testers and practicing pushing forth maximum weights. Most of the strength itself is going to be built off of these back off movements and off of my dynamic effort days because most of my training volume is on those DE days on the back half of the week. So that's a lot of our actual strength building and hypertrophy. That and then a lot of these accessory movements. So stuff like this, this is a potent accessory and this is still a big heavy compound. And that's what people need to remember. Your accessory movements don't have to be little bitty movements. I mean, this is a, an accessory and an assistance movement. This is really an, an assistance movement for your squat but it, it really hammers a weak point in the uh, upper back, hitting that whole upper back and thoracic region. And again, the T-spine, it just gets hammered, even with a fairly light weight here. Uh, and that's the area that I need to work on to improve my squat, because that's what's causing that problem with that, that upper back rounding. I need to keep strengthening that area. I have to strengthen it. I have to get it stronger. And so we're going to attack it, just like we're attacking the triceps for my bench press, which tomorrow we're going to test a max bench. We're testing the max bench, and I feel good about it. I feel confident about it. Uh, I think we're going to hit a good number. And, you know, I'll do other accessory work after that. So we're, we're hammering these carefully selected accessories. And in this case, the safety bar box squat. And then for my triceps for my bench, we're doing the JM press. So again, carefully selected accessories and then doing a lot of volume with them, right? A lot of volume. Uh, but all in all, good workout, happy with the numbers. I left. I felt like I left a little bit in the tank on both the lifts. So I hope it has been informative and I will talk to you guys next time.